Hello guys, happy new year, happy 2024, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you what we picked up when we went south for Christmas. Um, I also wanted to say I hope everybody had a happy holiday, whatever they celebrate. We took two weeks off to go visit family and friends um, down south, but we brought a little special someone back north with us. Um, so I am super excited this video to catch you up on kind of anything that's been happening um, and also introduce you to Tyga. So Tyga is our 11 week old puppy. Um, so we are super excited. We picked him up, like I said, a couple weeks ago when we went south and we've had him with us for about two weeks now. So he is a German Shepherd, Husky, and Golden Retriever cross. So his mom was Husky German Shepherd, so he's 25% each of those, and his dad was a full Golden Retriever. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Tyga. Hi, buddy. Hello. So you can see he's got the very lovely blue husky eyes and then he's got German Shepherd saddle on the back and the floppy ears and then he's got very red coloring from the Golden Retriever. And he's getting a little sleepy because it's almost his first nap time. Hey, what do you think? You haven't been on camera before, have you? You're a sweet boy. So we have been spending the last two weeks in full on newborn puppy mode, which if you guys know, is a lot. We are currently potty training. Um, he didn't come housebroken or anything like that. So we've been doing potty training, working on some basic training stuff, the sits, the comes, the kennels, all that kind of stuff. And of course, lots and lots of playtime. So we have an ideal household for being able to get a puppy because I do work from home. So I'm able to just work when he's napping and I can be here all the time so we can work on potty training. And uh, the big thing though is we are gonna be working on making sure he has no separation anxiety, which is a concern with puppies if you're home the whole time with them. So if you guys have any dogs um, and you have tips for separation anxiety, preventing it specifically, um, definitely feel free to let me know. But we have been doing lots of playing with him. I have tons of videos. I'm probably going to put a bunch in here of just our journey as we go. But that is our new puppy. So it's Taiga, which is T-A-I-G-A, -A, which is named after the Taiga Eco Region, which is just north to us on the other side of the river. Um, we wanted something that was going to be a Husky-esque name, but also have some sort of symbolic um, meaning for this area because we will likely have him much longer than we are living up here. Um, so that is Tyga. He's going to settle in for a nap, but I'm going to put lots of clips of our first couple weeks together and some playing and so you guys can get to know him. This is one of Tyga's favorite places to sleep because there is an air vent underneath that mat that blows warm air. And so he likes to uh, sleep on the warm spot on the floor. And he, at his 10 week checkup, was 24 and a half pounds already. So we are guessing he's going to be probably like... 95 85 100 pounds somewhere in that range so he's going to be a big dog but we wanted a big dog to keep up with us for coming out along on trip sledding and going fishing and camping and all the other things right Tyga? yes good boy you sit yes good boy good boy you're so pretty we love you so much so on the chicken side of things, they are still doing fantastic. Um, it is very cold today, which is why I'm taking today to film this video because I'd much rather be inside. It's currently 
minus 27 Celsius, but it feels like minus 31, and it's gonna be like this all week. We have definitely settled into northern winter temperatures. Um, but the girls are doing good. We had a house slash pet sitter come in and keep the girls fed and watered while we were down south, and we let them collect as many eggs as they wanted, but now that we're back, we are already getting a stockpile of eggs. Um, so we typically get three to four every day, and they're looking like this. So we are getting lots of the green ones from the Bard Rock Americana mixes. There is one light blue layer, but we don't typically get that egg very often. She tends to lay it where it gets broken. And then the dark ones are from Teriyaki, the Black Copper Marin. And uh, my good friend Laura gave me this really cute little egg stand so that I can put the eggs on and take pictures of them. And I just thought that was super cute. Um, so yeah, you can keep eggs in the fridge or just on the counter. Uh, we're having quite a bit crack, so we're actually just putting them straight into the freezer like this because they're typically frozen by the time we get to them. Um, but you can actually just toss them in the freezer and then when you want to use them, just pull them out and let them thaw and use them like a regular egg so that they don't go to waste. Um, so like I said, we are getting lots of eggs more than we actually know what to do with at this point. So I am going to be looking into some different methods of preserving it. So you can put them in Ziploc bags just scrambled um, and have pre-made portions of scrambled eggs. You can also do water glassing with um, hydrated lime, calcified lime, one of the two. Um, make sure you look it up though. <laughs> and uh, that preserves the egg whole in a jar and they actually stay fresh for up to a year shelf stable. Um, so yeah, that's how the chickens are doing and I will take you guys out with me when I go um, check on them today. So I did miss the solstice, um, but to give you a kind of sense of how dark it does get up here, we're, you know, three weeks from solstice already, so it's been getting lighter quicker, but it's only like 920 right now, and it's still pretty dark. There's light, enough light that you can see, but it's cold and it's dark, but that's what you get when you live subarctic. So we are going to go check on the girls and see if we have any eggs so far. So the coop is definitely building up waste a little bit quicker than I was hoping it was. So we're gonna have to strategize for next year and I'm still adding more bedding and more bedding. But I think just because it's cold enough that they don't even wanna come outside the coop so they're staying inside the coop all day um, instead of going into the run, that's probably why things are building up a little bit more than I thought they would. Good morning, girls. How's everybody doing? Good morning. Everybody still sleeping? Am I too early? Hey, good morning. Good morning. They were actually tunneling underneath there and laying their eggs there, <laughs> as you can see. Because um, I swapped, I had their nest box in this corner, but then they were pooping into their water too much. So I tried swapping them right before I left, um, but apparently they <laughs> still want to lay there. So they're foregoing the nest box, right? Your beard is all sorts of wacky. This one is either Chipotle or honey. I'm not quite sure. And then we have Nugget, Buffalo, the other Chipotle or honey, and Teriyaki. Oh, good girls. All right. So they don't usually lay their eggs this early, so I'm not surprised there's only one. But it's not cracked yet. Oh, is it cracked? Oh, it is cracked. That's okay. So we'll throw this one in the freezer. And while we were down south um, over the holidays, we did get, or I did get, some exciting new things that will definitely be showing up here on the channel. Um, so the first thing I got, if you guys, I don't think I had it in a video, um, but when my parents were up visiting this summer, we were uh, fly fishing for Arctic grayling on the Fond du Lac River, and my net... <laughs> fell or broke off of its like lanyard elastic and proceeded to float away down the river and was lost forever. We did try to catch up to it. Unfortunately, we did not get it. Um, so I was without a net for fly fishing, which they typically are just a small handheld net um, that attaches to your side to make it easier to land the fish. And so my lovely partner slash husband um, got me a new fly fishing net for Christmas. So that was very exciting. I will have a brand new net ready to go for this year's fly fishing season. Speaking of fishing, um, 
if you have been paying attention to temperatures in Saskatchewan, um, or let me know if it's like this in your area too, we have been having a very, very mild winter up to this point. Um, so we had multiple days in December, which were single digit positives, like plus one, plus two, where snow was melting, um, which is very, very un or abnormal or not normal for this area especially we're usually in the mid 20s minus 20s to mid minus 30s the whole month of december so because of the warmer temperatures the kind of off again on again freezing um the ice formation has been late slow and thin so we do not have a ton of ice i think just now the trails that people take sleds on to get to different fishing spots are finally freezing up enough that we can actually go use them. Also, if you didn't see my last video before the holidays, we bought a sled. So make sure you go and check it out. I will link it in the card up here. Um, so we are getting very excited to go ice fishing and to use the new sled, but conditions just haven't quite been safe enough, especially because we are still really new to this area and there's a lot of current in the water bodies um, and we just want to be very safe to make sure that nobody um, goes through the ice or has any accidents or worse. So for fishing so far, that's still been put on hold, but we should be able to start going out basically any time now. So we will hopefully find a spot that has some fish. And you guys will have to excuse my voice. I am getting over a cold that I picked up while we were down south and I'm right on the tail end of it, but my nose still gets a little stuffy. Um, so that was one thing we got. We got some new fishing stuff. Um, so very excited for that for summer. The other thing that I got, which I am super excited for, this actually wasn't a Christmas gift. This was something that I ordered during a Black Friday sale, but had it shipped to my parents' house because it didn't make it up here, is da da da, -da an all-American pressure canner. All of my kitchen people, my gardening people, the pressure canner is super, super exciting because this will allow me to preserve all kinds of foods for up here in the winter and just kind of in general to have um, because the pressure canner means that you don't have to acidify whatever it is you're canning. Um, so that means I will be able to can fish and meats, which I have not been able to do previously. I will be able to prefer preserve um, things like vegetables and broths. Um, without adding vinegar and making them a pickle um, and then basically it just opens up so much more opportunities um, for canning all sorts of produce so even when we go south for our grocery trips um, you know buying some extra and putting them up in the pressure canner um, in different recipes can just make it really 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 easy um, so I was definitely a little bit nervous I'm not gonna lie um, I found this pressure canner because the all-american brand is actually very hard to get in canada um you can look around for them a lot of places are out of stock or just like are simply don't carry it so i found this pressure canner on good to go co.ca i believe that's the company or good to go co is the company um and so they had it on black friday sale and i ordered it got it shipped to my parents house um because they wouldn't accept the address up here probably because it would have to go by mail and they likely just don't ship by mail um, however <laughs> immediately after I ordered it I started looking at some of the reviews for this website slash company and there were a lot of horrible reviews about people spending thousands of dollars on freeze dryers and not getting their products six to eight months later and potentially like is it a scam? Do they just not have good customer service? And so I got very nervous that I had ordered this expensive pressure canner, like even though it was on sale, it was still very expensive, um, and that I was potentially not going to get it. However, I will say my experience was not at all like the reviews. So I don't know if it's because they had it in stock um, or if it because it was a pressure canner and not some of the other items that people were having issues getting shipped to them. Um, so buyer beware, use at your own risk. Um, I will tell you where I got it from, but just you know, keep that in mind if you plan to order from them is that there have been issues in the past. Um, so I ordered it, it got processed four days later, 
um, I think, which is a little slow, but it was over a weekend. So, and then it did ship out within a few days and I did receive it after about a week and a half shipping from BC. Um, so I had no issues. Um, so for the canner specifically, um, if you're looking for a new pressure canner and you're having trouble finding one in Canada, goodtogoco.com is the company that I purchased from, but just very, very heavy beware because I know there are lots of people who have trouble with it and I just, I'm really hesitant to even recommend um, them just because of that. I don't want you guys to, you know, follow up on something that I recommend and have a really awful experience or potentially lose out on money. Um, that's just not something I want to do. So I'm gonna let you know where I got it because lots of people will probably ask. Um, however, just cautionary, use at your own risk type, type situation. And the last thing that I got is a whole bunch more yarn. Um, so this is um, for a couple different things. I have a couple headbands that I'm currently working on. Um, and I did make a separate Instagram account for my knitting stuff. So if you guys are more of a knitter, you can follow that there. You can see some of my tests on the board behind me. Um, these colors here, I got to make a sweater design. So the four colors there are going to be like the design and then the body of the sweater is going to be that charcoal gray so i picked up all the yarn for that and i also got some yarn in some greens and blues here and this green as well because i want to try to make a headband or a cowl um or like neck warmer i'm not sure which one specifically and i want to try to make like a walleye on it is my goal so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it so if you never see it you never heard anything um, but that is some of the things I'm working on um, this one here was my test piece for doing like a ptarmigan headband so I picked up the other colors I needed to use that um, I was just using scrap yarn for there um, yeah so definitely gonna be doing a lot more knitting I'm working on a all black blanket right now um, using this yarn for my sister and I'm also working on a sweater um, for somebody else who asked if I could do a custom order for them. Um, so lots and lots of projects knitting wise. It will definitely keep me busy through the winter months. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven or eight projects currently planned for, for the knitting side of things. So if you guys like the knitting side, uh, the Instagram is at Shana Knits um, and I will throw a link to it down in the comments. Um, or, you, you know, I will occasionally be posting knitting content on YouTube here. It's not going to be a lot, I don't think, because it takes forever to knit something. And I've tried a couple times filming the whole process. And just when it takes you two months to knit a sweater, keeping track of the video and remembering to take video over that two months, it just doesn't really work for me. I usually film these videos the day before, edit them, and then upload them like the next day. Um, so yeah, that's it for knitting stuff. And the other thing, I got myself a new fish tank. Um, so I don't actually share our other pets on here, um, but we do have quite a few pets. Both my partner and I love animals. Um, obviously we have the chickens. We now have Tyga. We also have Loomis, who I've a couple times in the video. He is our parrotlet. And we also have seven fish tanks now, I think. Um, the fish hobby, aquarium hobby is definitely a little bit more of my partner's than mine, but I do enjoy it as well. Um, we also have reptiles. So I have a crested gecko that I've had for six and a half years now. Um, we have three snakes. One of them is mine. One of them is my partner's and the other one we got together. Um, so we have a Taiwan beauty rat snake, a Florida king snake, and a bull snake. And then we... Yeah, no, I think that's everything then. So we have a whole list of, of animals that we, we keep in our house. Um, and maybe if you guys are interested in that, I can do a video on that sometime in the future. But yeah, so I think that covers everything for catching you guys up on what's been going on over the holidays. Um, we didn't see much for wildlife. We were fairly busy with the puppy, so I didn't, I did take my camera south with me. Uh, but we didn't see a whole ton of stuff. However, when we were driving back north, I did get to see two adult lynx and I actually got a really amazing photo of one of them. So to end off this video, I'm gonna throw the photo up. 
um, so you guys can see it. It'll probably also be in the thumbnail, so if you caught that, then you will have seen it as well. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I almost completely forgot. I made wildlife calendars. So back in kind of November, you guys probably would have seen the links for the pre-orders. Um, but I actually have the printed calendars. So I made a wildlife photography calendar. Um, so I have some of these, they're printed, they are ready to ship. Um, we have all sorts of different photography throughout the months. So I only have, I think I only have 18 of these left at the time of filming this. So I'm going to put the link in the description. If you guys would like a calendar featuring all of my photography, um, from different places over the past year, definitely go ahead and get yourself a calendar because once these are sold out, they are gone. I'm not bringing them back again until next year for the 2025 calendar. So super excited to show you that. Um, all of the photos for it have been on my Instagram and also on my website. If you go into the actual um, like item to purchase it and if you scroll over in the photos, I have like a fake back with like all the pictures on it that I've made. So you can see everything that's in the calendar if you wanna look ahead. It does have caribou in it, it has ptarmigan in it, it has fish, birds, animals, uh, foxes, um, and even some sea lions from when we did our BC trip last March. Um, so with that, <laughs> that is everything for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching if you watched all the way to the end. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Um, and yeah, let me know how your winter's going, how your holidays were, throw it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys and we will see you in the next video.